Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. In the previous video we have seen a preview of my reference authentication flow with Flutter and Firebase. And today we will focus on the authentication code for this project so that we can understand how to build a flexible and reusable authentication service for our own applications. So let's get started. As we have seen, this demo app contains three different screens. The first one is a sign-in page, which is what we see when we first open up the application. Then we have an email and password sign-in page, which is presented when we press on this button. And after we sign in, we get a home page, which at the moment is just an empty page with a logout button. Now, as this diagram shows, here we have a simplified widget tree for this application. And at the top, we have a root level widget, and then we have a provider widget that we use to expose an authentication service that is used by all the widgets below. And while this project uses Firebase Auth as the primary authentication system, this application has been designed to keep all the implementation details of Firebase Auth inside an authentication service class that is separate from the rest of the code. So if I move over to my editor, I can open up this folder called services and in here I can open this file called authservice.dart. And here I want to focus on this abstract class called Alt Service. Now, you can think of this as the authentication API for the project. In other words, these are all the methods that are used to authenticate users in this project. And then I can open this file called Firebase Alt Service. And this is a concrete implementation of Alt Service. And as you can see, this class declares a reference to Firebase Alt instance which is a singleton object inside the Firebase Auth class. Now, this object is what you would normally use if you were to call Firebase Auth methods directly in your code. However, in this project, I have chosen to keep all the Firebase Auth specific API calls inside this file, and this makes our code base more maintainable, because we can more easily adjust to breaking changes in Firebase Auth in the future, and by hiding all implementation details behind this auth service abstract class, then it becomes easier to swap Firebase auth for a different authentication provider if we want to. Now, you may have noticed that all the methods in this class return either a future or a stream of type user. However, user is not a type that is returned by the APIs in Firebase auth. And in fact, methods from Firebase Auth return objects of type Firebase user. So what I'm doing in this class is converting all instances of Firebase user to user, which is a simple model class that is in no way related to Firebase Auth. And the advantage of this is that we don't leak any internal types from Firebase Auth to the rest of our codebase. And in fact, when we call any of the methods inside auth service, we will only get futures or streams of type user. And as a result of this, the only file in our project that imports Firebase auth is our Firebase auth service. And this means that we have completely abstracted away Firebase auth from the rest of our code. By the way, this project uses third-party providers such as Google and Facebook to sign in and we need to import additional packages in order to sign in with these providers. But once again, the API calls that we need to sign in with Google and Facebook are now just implementation details that have been hidden away inside our Firebase auth service. Okay, so we have now seen how to create an abstract authentication service with a concrete implementation that uses Firebase auth. So let's take a look at how we can use this in the code. And here I have my main.dart file, and as you can see, the build method returns a provider of type auth service. And in the builder closure of our provider, we return an object of type auth service adapter. And we will look at what auth service adapter is in a minute. But for now, I want to show you how to use our authentication service in the app. So here I can open the landing page which is a widget that we use to decide which page to show, depending on whether the user is signed in or not. And in a nutshell, here we use a stream builder to listen to the authentication state of the user. 
And if we get a null user from our snapshot, then it means that we are not signed in and we can show the sign in page. And if we get a non null user, then it means that we are signed in and we can show the home page. And we also need to deal with the connection state of our snapshot because when our application starts, we get a connection state dot waiting. And in this case, we show a circular progress indicator. Now, the interesting thing that I want to show you is that whenever we need to access our auth service, we can do so by making a call to provider of auth service or context. And this is because all the widgets below this provider have access to the auth service. Okay, so we have now seen how we can set up and call our authentication code. And the next thing that I want to show you is that with this configuration, we can actually swap our Firebase auth service with a different implementation instead. For example, over here, I have created a mock auth service class, which also implements auth service. And just to be clear, this is a class that I've created for testing purposes only and not something that you would use in production. And the idea here is that I can create a mock or fake authentication service, which only pretends to authenticate the user and doesn't really do it in practice. And I can use this to add a fixed delay whenever I make a call to sign in the user. So to show you how this works, I can open the developer menu on the left side and I can choose the mock authentication service. And after I've done this, I can press on the button to sign in with Google. And as you can see, I get a circular progress indicator and also all the signing buttons are disabled until the request completes. And then I'm taken to the home page. So this mock auth service is a useful technique that I can use to test that my UI works as intended while a signing request is in progress. And the other advantage of a mock service is that, is that it doesn't rely on any backend API because it is just a fake service that is implemented entirely in the client code. Now, if you are using Firebase auth, then your backend API will be very reliable so you don't have to worry about downtime. However, in other projects, you might need to use a backend REST API that might still be in development. And in cases like this, having a mock API service can be a good idea because it means that you can develop your app before the backend is ready. Okay, so we have seen that both the Firebase auth service and the mock auth service implement auth service. However, how can we switch between them at runtime? And this is when the auth service adapter comes in. So this is a custom class that I have written and I can use it to switch between Firebase auth service and mock auth service based on some state. So the main idea here is that I can define an enumeration called auth service type with two values named Firebase and mock. And then I can define this adapter class which also implements auth service and inside this class I can create one instance of Firebase auth service and one instance of mock auth service. And then I can define an auth service type notifier, which is a value notifier of type auth service type. And I can use the value of this value notifier to decide which authentication service I should use when any of the methods in the auth service class are called. By the way, I will cover value notifier in detail in a future video. But for now, the important thing to understand is that I can use this to define some state, which is the current auth service type. And based on this state, I can call the methods of Firebase auth service or mock auth service accordingly. And this is possible because I have this auth service getter variable, which returns Firebase auth service or mock auth service, depending on the value of auth service type which is the value of my value notifier. So the next step to get this all working is to return an auth service adapter inside the builder of our provider of auth service. And just to be clear, we can see how all the different authentication classes fit together in this diagram. So the rest of our app doesn't even know that Firebase auth service and mock auth service exist because it always talks to the auth service adapter, which implements auth service. 
The last thing that I need to cover is how we can switch between the Firebase and Mock authentication services in our UI. And this is all done by a widget called Alt Service Type Selector, which is contained inside our developer menu over here. So this is a widget that contains a segmented control, which in turn is another custom widget that I made, and this uses a Cupertino segmented control which is the widget that you see over here. And the main thing to notice here is that this widget has an on value changed callback and this gives us an old service type which we can use to set the value of the old service type notifier inside our old service adapter. So this is what we use to change the state, but we also need to make sure that this widget updates itself when the type changes. And this is done by wrapping the widget with a value listenable builder. And this is a widget that takes a value listenable object, such as the old service type notifier from our adapter class. And it gives us a builder, which is called when the value changes. So what we do here is to take the type from the builder and pass it to the value argument of our segmented control. And I think this is quite neat because it allows us to write this old service type selector as a stateless widget, while the actual state is held by the old service type notifier inside the old service adapter. And as we have seen, this is used to switch between the Firebase and the mock authentication service inside the adapter. Okay, so in this video, we have covered a lot of different concepts. So let's do a wrap up. We have learned about how to write an authentication service that abstracts away all the logic that is specific to Firebase Auth so that our application can just talk to a generic authentication API. And we have seen how we can use the provider package to get access to that authentication API. And we have also seen how we can write a mock authentication service that we can use to more easily test the UI in our app without relying on a backend API. Then we have introduced an auth service adapter, which gives us a way to switch between the Firebase and the mock auth services at runtime. And we have seen how to write a widget that we can use to change the auth service type by using a value notifier. Now, I have not covered value notifier in much detail because this video was primarily about authentication and I will cover state management in much more detail in an upcoming video where we will learn more about value notifier and other alternative state management techniques. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to learn more about Flutter, you can subscribe at codingwithflutter.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.